<laughs> okay, beast, let us go. personally found this new take on what they're like in the 42nd millennium much more nuanced and grounded. As it stands, the Alpha Legion has maintained one primary objective for 10,000 years, to tear down the Imperium. They just can't all agree on the best way to go about doing that 10,000 years. And because of this, there are no surviving Alpha Legionnaires that were alive during the Horus Heresy. And that's kind of a big deal. At one point in the book, the Alpha Legion is described like a bolt shell that shattered against the walls of Terra, before splintering off into thousands of different warbands, or, in this analogy, pieces of shrapnel, that each lodged themselves somewhere deep within the body of the Imperium, dealing a great amount of damage in their own right, and never truly being able to be removed but they were no longer a unified whole. Now, it's true that every legion and every chapter has a history shrouded in mystery, as important records have been purged, sole surviving secret keepers slain in battle, or major historical events having never actually had their events recorded on paper. But with the Alpha Legion, this is taken to a whole new level, as secrecy was kind of their whole bag during the Great Crusade. Their Marines of today look back on their ancestors with a pretty heavy amount of frustration, as they don't really know anything about their Legion's history, what its purpose was, what their goals are, and what they're supposed to be doing. And the only thing that they know is that the Imperium is their hated ancient enemy, and it's their sole purpose to see its destruction. There are tales amongst the warbands that apparently their Primarchs once had some grand plan, some super secret ambition that them and all of their sons were all in on. But there are no surviving members of the Alpha Legion from the Horus Heresy era and no records to go on. No one has even seen either of the Primarchs in 10,000 years. Some say Alpharius was killed on Pluto, while others say it was Omegon. Still others say that neither of the Primarchs died, and they still exist somewhere out in space, and one day will return. But these are all just rumors, they really don't have anything to go on here. When it comes to the views of the various warbands, they're kind of all over the place. There's only a single warband that continues the practice of wearing Alpharius' face, contrasted against this being done by the entirety of the Alpha Legion back during the days of the Great Crusade, that this is something that is not widely done by the modern Alpha Legion. In fact, at one point in the book, a conclave is called for all of the warbands to get together and discuss what is to be done about the Primaris Marines and the return of Gilliman. A handful of representatives from the warband known as the Faceless step forward and remove their helmets, all bearing Alpharius' face. When the first one goes to speak and says the famous line, I am Alpharius, the entire room erupts. Some members of the Legion shouting condemnations, others saying, no you're not, and others still lost in uproarious laughter. However, Solomon, the main character of the book, steps forward and quiets the crowd down. He says if this warband wishes to continue the practice of looking like their Primarch, they have every right to do so. But let it be known that it gives them no authority over any other warband. 
And speaking of authority, the Alpha Legion has a pretty nuanced perspective when it comes to their hierarchies. They value expertise above everything else and don't much care where it comes from. Whether the individual be human, space marine, or xenos, it doesn't really matter. If an individual has expertise in a subject that is useful to the Legion, then they are respected. But there isn't a centralized hierarchy. Now, there are both strengths and weaknesses involved with this. On one hand, they are incredibly fluid and are able to adapt to new situations incredibly quickly. Having to adhere to doctrines, scriptures, and formal recognitions of rank made a warband incredibly rigid, and rigid tools were more prone to breaking than stress. However, on the other hand, when a serious situation develops, like the Primaris Marines suddenly showing up out of nowhere, none of the warbands can really agree on what to do. It creates a bit of a chaotic situation. The book even dispels the classic Alpha Legion meme of it may look like I was defeated, but secretly this was my plan all along. You've activated my trap card, Imperium. There's and they're going to be examining this victory for the next century, wasting countless resources and man hours flipping over every single possible stone, trying to figure out what they missed. What was the Alpha Legion's real objective here? And meanwhile, the Legion has already moved on to their next engagement. This uncertainty on the Imperium's part is made even worse by the Alpha Legion's fractured nature, as from... You know what I'm like in these then, which I never tried this thing, the the glaive or whatever it's called. It's it's pretty quick. Fast as fuck boy, and you don't see many people using it either. So I feel I feel a bit different and special, you know. You know what I'm like in these then, which I never tried this thing, the the glaive or whatever it's called. It's, it's pretty quick. Fast as fuck, boy! And you don't see many people using it either. So I feel I feel a bit different and special, you know? See it to that. Oh. Oh. 
Moving forward! Seize weapons! Thought I was good, but fault to my health There wasn't you, I was stuck in myself 